white man lie. Get to 2016, and we've been at the bottom for over hundreds of years. We still ain't got no 40 acres or no mule. So we're going to go into the Bible to figure out how we got to our lowest state, brothers and sisters. We Romans 15, verse 4. Because believe it or not, believe it or not, our oppressors have done a very good job at destroying our people. They have hidden our history. There's a such thing as iconoclasm. They have took our images and repainted our images. They have hidden our history in their libraries over there in the Vatican, in their libraries underground that we cannot even go into. Because our history is important. Who we are is important. But the problem you see before you, we are not of this world. We in it, but we are not of it. We are glitch in the matrix. We're going to about to show y'all who y'all are and what y'all must do. Romans 15, verse 4. Bring Romans it chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning. The Bible says that whatsoever things that were written aforetime was written for our learning. Again, our is very possessive. So it says the things in this Bible was written for the Israelite man's learning. Read on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. It said that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Hebrew 336. Because the Most High God has a very intimate relationship with the, with the 12 tribes of Israel. We are God's people. We are God's children. God is the father to our people. We have a Lord and Savior, the Most High God's son. The Most High God has been doing us on a very intimate level, but because of that, the standard for us is very higher than everyone else. Bring it up. go into that. Read this. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 36. Uh -huh. He has found out all the way of knowledge. The Bible says the Most High God found out all the ways of knowledge. Everything that was important. What foods to eat. What foods not to eat. What things damage our bodies? What things we should not put into our bodies? He found out all the ways of knowledge, read. And have given it unto Jacob. His servant. No, That's God right. found out all the ways of knowledge and gave it to every human being. And have given it unto Jacob, his servant. Jacob is our forefather. Jacob had 12 sons. I myself, I am from the tribe of Judah. The so-called blacks, or known as African-Americans, or colored, or Afro-Americans, we have a tribe, brothers and sisters. We are from the tribe of Judah. That is Jacob's fourth son. You read about him in Christ's lineage in Matthew 1. Christ came from Judah as well. You understand? Read that from the top. Verse 36. He have found out all the way of knowledge, uh -huh. and have given it unto Jacob, his servant. So the Most High God found out all the ways of knowledge, and given it unto Jacob, his servant. Read and to Israel his beloved and to the 12 tribes of Israel the Most High God loves us so much he does not want us to do anything that is abominable he does not want us to do anything that is out of order the Most High God wants, wants us to be a holy and special people Me, Matthew 5 verse 16 we have a purpose on this planet brothers and it is not selling drugs it is not who has the biggest behind sisters it is not who has the longest weave sisters Bring it out. we have a purpose on this planet and our purpose has been hidden from us. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. This is our purpose. Read. Let your light so shine before men. The Most High God said, let our light shine before men. Read. That they may see your good works. That they may see our good works. Read. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. It said, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Most High God chose us to create the standard to create the mold of how everybody is supposed to conduct themselves, how everybody is supposed to carry themselves. He chose us to do that, read it again. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men uh -huh. that they may see your good works uh -huh. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Most High God gave us this Bible. He, get, he found out all the ways of knowledge so that we can be the greatest people on the planet. That's right. It's the laws that make us great, brothers and sisters. That it's the laws right. that make us good, that make us holy. Give me in Romans 7 and 12. The Most High God did not give us these laws to constrict us, to confine us. He did not give us these laws to oppress us. He gave us these laws for our good always. Right. Read that. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Huh? Wherefore the law is holy. The Most High God gave the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called blacks, you Hispanics, you Native American Indians, all of you who have these new names that don't even go back 200 years. 
He gave y'all laws, read. And the commandment only. He gave y'all commandments, read. And just and good. These things I will make our nation a good nation. These things I will make our people a holy people. So how do we get to where we are today? Give me Jeremiah 2, 21. The Most High God gave us everything that we need. The same way a father nurtures his son. The same way a father teaches his son right from wrong. The same way a father gives his son proverbs to give his son discernment and judgment. The Most High God gave us all these things, but what do we do with it? What happened to us? Why do we pack the jails? Why do we walk with our pants sagging? Why every brother I see, four, four out of five smoking cigarettes, smoking up. weed, literally destroying himself. Right. He is killing himself slowly without music. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. What does the word noble mean? Because the Most High God said that he planted the torch house of Israel a noble vine. What does noble mean? Noble means holy. Noble means that he made us on top. Noble means that we are loyal people. Noble means that we are special people. Noble means that we are civilized people. Right. Noble means that we conduct ourselves in the utmost manner. Bring it up. We're in the upper echelons of the human beings on the planet. That's Bring right. God said, I made y'all that way. Read it from the top. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. God said, I planted you. I created you to be a noble vine, right? Holy, a right seed. He said, holy, a right seed. Which means everything that come out that came out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is supposed to be the image of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They did not send me for the Most High God. Read. How then art thou turned into, into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto thee? Unto the me. Holy Father asked the question to the 12 tribes. He said, how did y'all become a degenerate vine unto him? The Most High God made us a holy nation of people. Look at us today, brothers and sisters. We twerking in graveyards. We kill our own people for nothing over a meme mug, a shoulder check. Bring it out. Bring he it said, out. how did y'all get that way? I didn't make you that way. How did we get this way? Read it again. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, huh? only a right seed. Huh? How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? He said, how did you become a degenerate plant of a strange vine? We act like the strangers of the Torah tribes of Israel. We act like the other nations. We act yeah. profane. We eat what we want to eat. The Most High God say, how did you get this way? I didn't make you this way. Give me Lamentations 4, verse 2. Bring it out. Bring it the out. Most High God wants us to remind, the Most High God sent us out here to remind y'all of y'all are worth. Y'all don't know what y'all are worth. Yes, right. Our sisters don't know they are the precious daughters of Zion. Right. Yes, our right. brothers don't know that they are the holy ones of Israel. We are the saviors of our people. Right. We don't right. know that today. Why is that? God is asking these questions. He's proposing these questions to our people. Read that. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 2. The precious sons of Zion. No, the degenerate sons of Zion, God said. The precious sons of Zion. The sons of Zion are you Torah tribes of Israel, you blacks, you Hispanics, you Native American Indians. All of you have been renamed. The word Indian itself means savage or slave. These are not our God-given names. God said, the precious sons of Zion. Read. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. The Most High God compared the spirit within our people to fine gold. He said to fine gold, comparable to fine gold. We are the gold walking on this earth. Right. God said what? The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. Come on. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? The Most High God has another question, brothers and sisters. He said what? How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? It said, how are we now in these last days, brothers and sisters, how are we esteemed as earthen pitchers? Earthen is another word for dirt. What do we find in dirt? We find dung in dirt. That means we are esteemed as S-H-I-T. We are esteemed as nothing. God said we are comparable to fine gold. But in these last days, we are, we are esteemed or viewed or when they view our people, the perspective for our men is as dumb, as dirt, as nothing. How do we get this way? How did we get this way? We are supposed to be a noble people. We are supposed to be a holy people, a good people. Right. God gave us the laws for our good always. How do we wind up where we are today? Up. Let's take a walk down memory lane. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Bring it out. We gonna see how we got to where we are at today, brothers and sisters. We got to where we are today because of y'all rebellion. 
Bring it out! Y'all will listen to everything. Y'all will follow everybody except for this Bible. Y'all will follow Islam. Y'all will follow Buddhism. Y'all will follow white Jesus. When that is not even biblical. Y'all will follow science, Scientology. Y'all will follow Jay-Z, Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, and Lil Wayne. Right. But when the Holy Bible comes out, everybody has an opinion. Right. Right. But when they promote sagging your pants as a trend or a fad, nobody has an opinion. Everyone just like zombies sags their pants. Right. When they promote that our women should dress like whores, show you're behind. Uh, today, women, less is more when you get dressed. Right. Right. Nobody has an opinion saying, well, I don't think that less is more. Everybody's out here naked. Daisy Dukes, mini skirts. Nobody has an opinion. Right. Your opinion is what you got from the television set. It's right. in every household. But when the Teach Bible comes out, up. nobody has an opinion. It's time for us to humble down to the words of God to get back to our holiness, Bring back to our greatness, right. back to being compared to fine gold, because that is not what's going on today. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. So now we're going down memory lane to figure out how the torch out of Israel, you so-called black men, you Hispanic men, you Native American men, got to where y'all at today. Because y'all started off great. In these last days, y'all are esteemed as nothing. So let's figure out how we got to where we at. Read that. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God told the Torah tribes, if you blacks, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans, do not hearken. Hearken is, a, is just a big word for him. That's another word for listen. God told our ancestors a very long time ago, if y'all do not listen to me, if y'all do not hear me, if y'all do not humble down to, this, to these commandments, right? To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God said, if y'all do not keep these commandments, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Means it does not matter if you live in North America. It does not matter if you live in South America. It does not matter if you live in Europe, because we are scattered throughout all countries of the earth. Bring it out! God said, it does not matter where you go. They shall come upon thee and overtake thee. There is not a ghetto you can find where our people are not in it. Right. Period. There's not a hotel you can go to where a black or Hispanic is not scrubbing the toilet. Right. God said, they shall come upon thee and I will take you, whether you believe it or not. Bring it out. The most I got like Ripley's. Give me verse 48 now. So how do we get to where we are today? Give me verse 48. Bring it out. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. The most I got say, y'all for breaking my commandments, y'all are going to serve your enemies. The reason why God is calling the Caucasian race our enemies is because a friend would not put a friend in slavery. That's right. A friend would not put another friend's wife, right. daughter, mother. So God is very specific with who he's talking to. Because only an enemy in the worst kind will put you on a ship to be defecated and bonded on because of diseases and sicknesses on a boat where you're traveling for eight, nine, ten months over the Atlantic Ocean to come to America and then be a slave and pick cotton for 20 hours a day. Only an enemy and the worst kind of enemy would do that to you. Bring it out! So God is very specific with us. Teach us. These people are not our friends. That's Look at their background check. What people go around the earth terrorizing everyone? What people go around and, and bully smaller countries and call it a war? Bring it out! What is a symbol? The eagle. What does the eagle do? An eagle preys on smaller birds. America preys on smaller and weaker and more feeble countries. 48 again. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. God snatched us out of our greatness. God said, I'm going to make you serve your enemy. You think you're so great? What made you great is God's laws. That's right. Because you don't want to keep God's laws. He said, therefore, shall you serve your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. He said, which the Lord shall send against thee. The first of us who got conquered, we didn't come from Africa. We came from Spain. Right. We ruled in Spain during the Byzantine Empire. Jeez. King oh. James was a black man. Yes, we live in the age of electronics, the age of computers, the age where information and knowledge is at our fingertips. Bring Don't it out. Brothers got smartphones. Don't y'all you know y'all can type in King James, a black man, who get an image of his face? Don't y'all you know can type in Caesar Borgia and find out that this man is Rodrigo Borgia's son? Yeah. Only those who are sweet today are those who want to say sweet. So God said we got to serve our enemies, we know. In hunger and in thirst. He said in hunger and in thirst. How you doing, brother? What's your name, bro? Daryl. Daryl, you got it. You got any questions, bro? Yeah, like, uh, I just heard you close, bro. I just heard you say something like this. 
I just heard you say something about Spain. Yes, sir. Is that true, bro? Yeah, that is true. Our people, for example, give me another catch out the room. It's very true. For example, they teach us that we came from Africa, right? We did come from Africa. Where's the, uh, is it behind me? Is that it? it You're holding enough for me. So they teach us that we came from the coast of West Africa. And I will, we still have Israelites who are scattered in West Africa. But what they failed to teach us is the fact that we ruled Europe. We ruled Spain. We ruled Ireland. It was called the Byzantine Empire. That's because right. Rome, Rome came, for example, who killed Christ, the Messiah? The black Messiah, who killed him, bro? Uh, 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 here. 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 You said Herat? Here. No, sir. For example, today they got lethal injection, right? Who set up lethal injections to kill people who commit capital uh, crimes? Who did that? What nation should people control the government that, that does lethal oh, America. What, what color are the Americans? Okay. Caucasians. Okay, they set up lethal injection, right? Before they had lethal injection, they had what? The electric shock. Am I right? Before they had electric they had things like what? The guillotine? Before that, they had the Roman crucifix. The Roman crucifix. These were... These were capital punishments, you understand? So, it was white people who nailed the Messiah to the cross, and there's a judgment for that. It's written, it's recorded in the Bible. We now have seen any emotions right now, we're seeking the Bible. The Bible is a history book, it has nothing to do with fairy tales, it has nothing to do with uh, fiction at all. That's right! It's the history and the plight of our people that we suffer from today. So now, let me show you something, Malachi 1, chapter 1, verse 2. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3. And I hate it, he saw So listen, brother. Hey, Dale. I won't say God. We say again. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Okay, do you know who Esau is today? Do you know who the nation of Esau or Edom is today? No. Okay, Esau is the progenitor of the Caucasian race. The first Caucasian, so I'm saying Caucasian, you know, they classify themselves that because they live in the Caucasian mountains with the rest. But the first Caucasian who fought at Mount Seir, his name was Esau. You understand? This is what the Most High God said about that nation of people. Read it again. Bring it up. I hated Esau. Most High God said, I hated them. Read on. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Footnote. We're reading the Holy Bible, the King James Version Bible. This ain't a special Bible. This ain't an Israelite Bible. This is not an IUIC Bible. This is the Holy Bible, 1611, the original version. Okay, read that again. I hated Esau. Most High God said, I hated Esau. Read on. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. So I laid his mountains and his heritage waste, which means they were destroyed. They were brought to a very low level. You understand? When would the so-called Cauc when would the Caucasian race brought to a low level? When was that? That's a good question, right? Okay. Have you ever heard of the Renaissance era? Okay. Renaissance means what? Okay. It's all right, bro. It's all right. When, when, when we read this controversial, when we're going about this controversial, but we're not, we're not here to, to uh, be nice to everybody. We're here to deal with the truth, right? The word Renaissance means rebirth. The rebirth took place in 1453. Why they got to be reborn, bro? Why they got to come back in power? When they ruled since Christ's time? Since around 0 AD? So why they got to come back? Why they got to be reborn? What's going on? That's because, watch this. Read that verse again. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste uh -huh. for the dragons of the wilderness. The Caucasian race was laid waste in 193 AD. Our right. forefather, his name was Septimius Severus. He was a gladiator. Him and the other gladiators Rome with the rest of our people, they brought Rome down. Rome fell and we ruled up until the 15th century. You understand? And we fought against them up until the 17th century when the last of us were finally conquered. You understand? That's known as what's called the Byzantine Empire. You understand? That's why I made a statement earlier. I said the first slaves came from Spain. Those were the Jews. Those of us in West Africa were the Jews. That whole coast of West Africa. You got a flyer, right? Okay, you got a number on the back, but you can contact me. But, uh, security purposes, I can't shake your hand. But listen, bro. The first slaves came from Spain. And then they got the bulk of us in West Africa. That whole coast of West Africa was called Fort Judah. Because we are not African. We have nothing to do with them. They cannot say And then, and then bringing us in with them. Do you see that, bro? Nah. You don't see that at all. That's because we have two totally different people. God's able to difference between us. So we going into the Bible to figure out how we got to where we are today. Because the Most High God said we were a holy people, a special people, 
a noble people. But today you see us selling drugs to one another. We kill one another before we even think to harm anyone else. We won't bust a break when it comes to the other nations, but we'll kill our own brother in a heartbeat. Right. How do we get to where we are today? We're gonna deal with that. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Huh? Bring it Therefore, on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So we serve our enemies, those who hate our guts. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. God says, which I sent against you for breaking my commandments. You Israelites, you blacks, you Hispanics, you Native American Indians. Read on. In hunger? God says, now you gotta serve your enemy whenever you get hungry. Whenever you want to put food in your stomach, you want a McDonald's, you want a Burger King, you want a Wendy's, you want a Arby's, you want a Kroger, you want a Walmart. All of those places are not owned by our people. They are owned by the same ones who put us in chains, collars, and fetters of iron, who put us on slave ships. So God said you got to serve them in hunger. Whenever you get hungry, they get paid. Read on. And in thirst? He said, and in thirst, which means that whenever they decide to cut off the water in our community, no more water for you. Whenever they decide to close Walmart and Kroger, there is no more water for you. Which means you are still a slave to this very day. We don't own anything. What reservoirs have our name on it? Read on. And in nakedness? God say, and in nakedness. He stripped us down to a very uh, humble level. To the point we gotta go to the people who hate our guts for everything. Because we don't want to go to the Father for everything. We don't want to keep the most high God's laws. So and now he made us serve those who hated our guts. This is just like a parent say, okay, you don't do my rules? Well, then go. But I guarantee you, wherever you go, you're going to listen to somebody. Whoever house you go to, you're going to listen to them. Bring it out. My parents told me the same thing. God is saying the same thing. You don't want to serve me, you're going to serve, you're going to serve someone. Bring it out. Read on. And in want of all things. God said, now we got to go to them in want of all things. All things. Let's meditate for a second. God said, we got to serve our enemies. We got to go to them for food, water, clothing, shelter. He said, and in want of all things. That means that our own opinions that flow through our mind, where do we get them from? There's a such thing, brothers and sisters, as propaganda. That means when you see an image, there's a thought behind the image. That's right. Who controls the television set? Who controls the radio? Who controls these movies? What these movies do is they put a spell on you. The word Hollywood itself goes back to witchcraft. What they let you know is they control the way you think. So when you see your brother, this country has taught you to see a thug, a pimp, a murderer, a drug dealer. When you see one of them, you see a doctor, a lawyer, a father, a teacher. Right. That's through propaganda. They taught you how to think. You get every thought that you get from them. Bring it out. Which means it's no mystery why our women don't want to humble down to us. She want to run her mouth. She want to get the last word. The last word is a sign of authority. So who taught her to usurp authority? Where did she get this idea from? They only promote feminism. And, they, and, and all you see them promote with us is us putting on the dress. That's by design. That's crafty counsel. Bring it low. This is how we got to where we are today because our enemies have destroyed us. And we go to them in one of all things, including our own opinion, including religion. The same people put us on slave ships. They now tell us, we're going to teach you the Bible. If you're not being taught the Bible by us, then who you been taught the Bible by? By your own oppressor. You know? Who was over the Christian church? Who was over the Catholic church? Y'all gotta meditate on these things. These things are good questions that no one asks ever. Where did white Jesus come from? Why don't we ever ask Pastor these questions? But I guarantee you, if we teach for five minutes, people walk up, they get more questions asked than they have ever learned they hold life in Christian church. That's right! Verse 48, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, huh? which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. The Most High God said that our enemy would put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Ask ourselves a question. Who seen Django out here? Who seen Roots out here? Who seen Goodbye Uncle Tom out here? God said, God told the Israelites, not African Americans, not Hispanics, not black people, but God told the Israelites in the last days, y'all should have yokes of iron on y'all neck. Who put the yoke of iron on our people's neck? Bring it out, up! Who did this to us? Bring it out! Because God is perfect, and God is not a man that he should lie. God said we would have yokes of iron upon our necks. That was prophecy. That prophecy became our history. That's right! Read on. Let's see how long the chains are on our neck. Read on. Until. What do you say? Until. The word that we want to focus in on and harp on is what? Until. So we had chains and yokes on our necks. Until what? He have destroyed thee. It says until he have destroyed thee. 
until you have, until you think that your dog's skin is ugly. Right. And you fail to realize that they sit in the sun baking just to get orange, because they can't get brown whatsoever. That's they right. sit in the sun with aluminum foil, baking all day, turning rotisserie style to get front and back. And then they teach you that your dark skin is ugly. Bring it out. They tell you that your, your hair is nappy, your hair is kinky. Meanwhile, you go to tutorials on YouTube and you got white women teaching other white women how to make their uh, hair like afros. That's Bring right. Out. But you have been bamboozled, you have been bewitched in America. That's how we got to where we are today, where everything is turned upside down. Give me uh, Psalms 15 verse 16. And I'm telling you straight up, brothers and sisters, the main reason why we are destroyed today is because of Christianity. Because Christianity has nothing to do with the Bible. That's right. We are reading scriptures out of the Holy Bible. You have never heard not one verse in Christianity a day in your life. That's right. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because there's no private interpretation. Meaning what? Meaning that if we read the Bible and it goes against Christianity, that means Christianity goes against the Bible. That's right. That means Christianity goes against God. Because we were taught by our oppressors. Let's see what God feels about us being taught by our oppressors. Because he left them a footnote in the Bible. Read that. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. Huh? But unto the wicked, God saith. So God is speaking to the wicked, those who oppress his people, those who enslave the towards of Israel. He said, to you wicked heathens, God say this, read. What has thou to do to declare my statutes? When he says, what has thou to do to declare my statutes, he means, how can you destroy the Israelites and then teach the book that was given to the Israelites. Bring it out! How can a white man teach a black man the Bible when the black men are the Israelites? Bring it out! Right. God said, Bring what have out. you to do to declare my statutes, my Bible? How can you teach my Bible? Read on. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Christ sent, the Most High God sent Christ to die for the tortures of Israel. How can you then say that Jesus died for everybody? He said, how can you take my covenant in your mouth? Read on. Verse 16. Seeing thou hatest instruction. God telling the white man, how can you take my covenant or this Bible in your mouth? Seeing, in other words, it's obvious that you hate instruction. The Bible says that thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. You pass gay marriage, white man. That's right. How can you then say that you're going to teach the Bible when you don't do nothing this Bible is saying? Right. It's, like, it's see, obviously that you hate instruction. I say that they are the greatest people on the planet. You said they're three-fifths of a man. You obviously hate instruction. We know. And cast is my words behind me. He said, you cast my words behind me. Today is the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. But the white man said, no, 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 no. I say Sunday because the white man is by blood a pagan. He is a pagan. He has always worshipped the sun along with other pagan deities. And they all know that. It's us who are ignorant. Not anymore. So it's no, it's no wonder, it's no astonishment that they congregate on Sunday. S-U-N day, not S-O-N day. Bring it out! The day of the sun is, is in, uh, the Sabbath day. Friday sundown, Saturday sundown. Let's prove it. Give me Matthew 12. Let's prove it. Bring it out! We're going to go to Christ's own mouth and we're going to dig into this Christianity and how it has destroyed our people. Let's see what day Christ said to, to, uh, to congregate on. Let's see what day Christ said is the Sabbath day. Read that. Verse 8. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 8. Read. For the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus Christ. The birth in the furnace Messiah will woolly her. What did he say? For the Son of Man is, the, is Lord even of the Sabbath day. No, 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 no. In Christianity, they say the Sabbath is every day. Even of the Sabbath day. Christ said, I am Lord even. Even means indeed in Quaker English. He say, I am Lord even or indeed of the Sabbath day. Nothing has ever changed. What changed is you have been destroyed and taught by your oppressor. That's right. You had a man who was going to film and rape your wife and then come back and then say, sit down so I can teach you the Bible. Right. And our people still follow that man to this day with our head up his behind. Right. It's time out for this. But like I said, brothers and sisters, we are glitching the matrix. Give me Corinthians 4. Give me verse 9. It's no, it's no, it's no confusion up here. It's no marvel that what we saying goes everything against everything we have been taught. We know that we are an astonishment. The prophets have always been an astonishment from the time of Jerusalem. Read that. First Corinthians chapter four and verse nine. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. The word apostle means set forth. God has set forth us last. Right. What does it mean last? 
It means after Islam, after all they did during the 50s and the 60s, after the Marcus Garvey movement, after the Black Panther movement, all these movements that failed, God has sent forth us, the apostles, those who are sent forth as prophets, to clean up the garbage of our people. That's to clean right. up the lies that have been taught to our people. To clean up the philosophies that were given to our people from the top. For I think that God has sent forth us the apostles last. God has sent his, his prophets out in America last, read. As it were approved to death. Read on. For we are made in spectacle. The Bible says that we are made a spectacle. We are a glitch in the matrix of America, the matrix of Babylon. We don't go to church on Sunday. We don't hate our brothers. We don't classify ourselves as blacks, Hispanics, or Native American Indians. You know? We don't say that because y'all don't know who y'all are. Y'all are the ones who are asleep. We are out here for y'all. It's time for us to wake up, rise up, and stand up. Right. You know? Who gonna hear this truth and do something about it? Or y'all gonna go home and watch Saturday morning cartoons? Right. Y'all go home and eat a big bowl of cereal and stay asleep. Who gonna rise up with this information? See, Give me Psalm 94 and 16. God wants to know. God proposes many questions to our people. Information is power. Christ said the truth shall make you free. So even though we don't control anything in America, if our minds know who we are, if our minds know we must keep God's laws, we are free while we are yet in captivity. Right. You got it? Read that. Psalm chapter 94 and verse 15. Sing it out. Verse right. 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? The Most High God said, what? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? The Most High God said, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will teach our brothers that they cannot uh, marry the other nations? They cannot be in relationship with the other nations. Bring it out! Our brothers to pull their pants up. Get you some friends so you can remember God's commandments. Right. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Who is going to rise up and teach this Bible as it is written? Give me Micah. Give me Micah 3. Give me verse 8. Because we out here for a reason. But truly, I am full of power. The Bible says that prophets, truly, we are full of power. Read it from the top. But truly, I am full of power. Truly, we are full of power. Read on. By the Spirit of the Lord. By the Spirit of the Lord. Read on. And of judgment and of might. And we are all here full of judgment and might. Because we know the reason we are in the place we are in today is because of God's judgment. For breaking God's laws and commandments. Read on. To declare unto Jacob his transgression. Why are we out here? To declare unto Jacob his transgression. To let our people know they cannot be with these Caucasian women, these African women, these Chinese women. We are come out from among them and be ye separate. Bring it up. That's what we have to declare unto Jacob his transgression. Read on. And to, and to Israel his sin. It say, and to Israel his sin. Read Matthew 4 and 17. We cannot say the way we are. We are far too great to say the way we are. Bring it up. Our greatness is in the laws. Our yes. greatness is in right. the commandments. Right. Right. Bring it up. God said, I made you noble, holy, just, good. Read that. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Huh? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Christ said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does the word repent mean? Repentance starts with sorrow. Sorrow for being the devil, the Bible speaks of all your life. From jumping from sister to sister to sister, having sex with our sisters and making them whores. Taking their virginity, then taking her virginity, then taking her virginity and making all our women whores. Bring it out! And not marrying them. Repentance starts with sorrow, knowing that you made your sisters whores. Bring it out! Knowing that you've been selling drugs to your own people. You're trying to kill your whole nation of people just to save your simple self. That is not wise to kill your whole community just to save yourself. Bring it out! Just to put food on your own table. All right. That is not wise. Christ said, repent. Be sorrowful for what you have done. And keep God's laws. Right. Right. Don't say the condition that you are in second chapter 7 and verse 29. Don't say the condition that you are in. We have a kingdom prepared for us. Christ said, is at hand. He didn't say it's on the way. He didn't say, I, I got to make it. I got to check it in the savings. And the way my check is set up, the kingdom will be ready in a couple years. He said, it's already at hand. It's ready. It's us who not ready. It's us who comfortable in captivity. Bring right. it out. It's us who please or delight in with being degenerate. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 49. Read. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time? The Bible says, what profit is it unto us if we are promised by the Messiah an immortal time? The kingdom of heaven, which we shall be filled with immortality. We shall reign. We shall reign. But what profit is it? Read. But for what profit? Read it from the top. 
Christ said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now listen to the question that Christ has for our people. Read it again. For what profit is it unto us huh? if there be promised us an immortal time? What is the profit of us being promised a kingdom when we're going to rule and be immortal and have everlasting life, read? Whereas, whereas we have done the works that bring death. It said, what profit is it for, for the Israelites, the blacks, the Hispanics, Native American people, to be promised an immortal kingdom? We shall rule this earth under Christ. Whereas we still stay in our sin. We do the works that bring death. What profit is it? What profit is it? There is no profit in that, brothers and sisters. Give me, give me Romans. No, give me 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. We think that having Michael Jordan shoes on our feet, we think that's living. We think having a couple hundred dollars in our pocket, we think that's living. We think having some weed to smoke and a fifth to drink, we think that's living. That is not living, brothers and sisters. Bring it out! There is an immortal time promised to us. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. But as it is written, as it is written in the Holy Bible, read. I have not seen. I have not seen, read. Nor ear heard. No ear out here has heard, read. Neither have entered into the heart of man. The heart of man means you can't even imagine, read. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. God says y'all can't even imagine the things that's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Y'all can't even imagine. You can't even imagine ruling a community. Let alone run and reign over a whole planet. Y'all can't even imagine if y'all want to stay in y'all sin. Y'all want to follow y'all oppressor. Y'all want to pick your fence when God say the earth was made for your sake. Yeah. Y'all stuck in a picket fence. Y'all stuck in an American dream. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.